This is Bill Reichert, National Director for Campus and Community Ministries here at CMDA. I'm so glad that you took the time today to hit that strategic pause button, to step away from what you were doing and to spend some time with us together as part of CMDA's community. It's so important that not only do we hear from God's word during times like this, but we know that we're not in this alone, that we're part of a greater community and uh, that's what makes these times so special. So again, thank you for joining us. In just a minute, we're gonna hear from Dr. Steve Sartori, who is the director for the Center of Wellbeing here at CMDA. But before I invite him to come open up God's word for us, I want to remind you that down below in the comment section is an opportunity for you to share with us your prayer concerns. These could be prayer concerns for yourself or somebody you know close to you, family, friends, other healthcare professionals. We take these comments, these prayer concerns seriously. We take them with us and we want to pray for them. And so uh, do share those with us. And uh, I'll remind you at the end of our live stream to again, put those prayer concerns in the comment section. Well, let me now introduce our devotional speaker for today. It's Dr. Steve Sartori. Again, I said he is the C director for CMDA Center for Wellbeing. And I have just counted it a privilege to work closely with Steve these many years. And uh, seeing him up close, I see a man who has got a deep abiding walk with the Lord, and in fact, leads as an overflow of that walk. And so I'm really encouraged that he's able to bring God's word to us today. Dr. Steve Sartori. Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Sartori, director of the Center for Wellbeing at the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. I'm a family medicine doc in rural Kentucky. As you can see, the pandemic has taken its toll on my hair, my face, but I have an appointment to see my barber later this week. He's now open, so I'm looking forward to that. I've had a lot of anxieties in my life, uh, wondering about whether or not I would get into medical school. Once I was in medical school, wondering if I'd be able to get through medical school, especially during the third year, when I had some embarrassing moments during my case presentations in the early morning hours on internal medicine, or later wondering if I would uh, get the match that I had requested on match day for my residency program. I've also experienced anxiety in a courtroom, having been sued for malpractice, having someone accusing me of wrongdoing and causing harm. Those are stressful events. What about you? I expect you also have experienced some anxieties. We've had a pandemic of anxiety in our culture for many years related to lots of variables. And now the COVID-19 pandemic has only accentuated this anxiety in our culture. When we talk about anxiety among a group of doctors or healthcare professionals, it oftentimes causes anxiety as doctors are often taught to suppress their emotions and keep them from surfacing and to numb themselves so they don't have to be interrupted or uh, hijacked by their emotions. Oftentimes we have difficulty identifying what we're feeling, what we're experiencing. But if we become more aware and slow down, we may be able to identify some of these emotions and even manage them and name them because if we name them, we may be able to tame them. Emotions happen faster than our thoughts and we have to slow down in order to recognize them. When it comes to the emotion of anxiety, the famous theologian, Mark Twain, uh, said, I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. He also said, worrying is like paying a debt that you don't owe. However, there's a much greater authority when it comes to speaking to the topic of anxiety, and that authority is the word of God found in the Holy Scriptures. Jesus himself said, do not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. He also said, come to me, those of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Peter, in his epistle, said, cast all your anxiety upon him, because he cares for you. And Paul gave us even more instructions about managing anxiety, found in the common passage in Philippians chapter 4. And I would like to focus on verses 6 through 8 
and then verses 12 through 13 in the rest of our time together. Let me start with verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. A friend of mine summarized this verse with the acronym WANPAE, W-A-N-P-A-E. He put that on his dashboard so he could see it when he was driving to work to remind him, worry about nothing, pray about everything. We do not need to remain in a state of anxiety. The scripture advises don't be anxious about anything. But the alternative, the replacement is to pray, talking to God, to petition, ask God, to be in a thankful attitude, an attitude of gratitude, to thank God, and then to present these requests to God, almost like we're giving God an offering. And when we give God that offering, what does he return it with? He exchanges it with a supernatural, transcendent peace. He wants our concerns to come to him. Come unto me, he says, and he will exchange it for a transcendent peace that will guard our heart, the seat of our desire, and guard our mind where we think. And when our mind is guarded, we're freed up to think about other things that are found in verse 8. The eight things of verse eight. What are we to think about? We are to think about whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. We cannot think about something different easily. We can only focus on one thing at a time. If I tell you not to think about a pink elephant eating jelly beans at your kitchen table, uh, you probably are thinking about that right now. But we must replace our thoughts with something else. And verse 8 tells us what we should think about. So as you think about what you're supposed to be thinking about, think about these things. Shift your thinking. And when you shift your thinking to those things, you will not be thinking about your anxiety. We have the freedom to choose what we will think about. Finally, in verses 12 and 13, Paul says, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Verse 13 is not a magic potion or magic bullet for enhancing athletic performance as it, is, as it is sometimes misused. It's a contentment verse. It's an anti-anxiety verse. And it applies to every situation and every circumstance, a universal prescription for anxiety. When contentment reigns, anxiety is dispelled. Circumstances will afflict you. You will experience perhaps hunger, uh, perhaps you'll be well-fed. You may be financially hurting. You may be rich. But whatever you're experiencing, contentment can be found. Contentment rises up from that conviction that God is working out his purposes throughout everything in life. And the secret is the strength of Jesus. Second Peter 1.3 reminds us that God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. So these are the secrets to contentment, trusting God. So when anxiety hits, we should turn toward God and tell him what we're experiencing. We should turn our thoughts to the things of Philippians 4.8. We do not have control of circumstances or our emotions, but we do have the choice, the freedom of thought of how we will respond. So how do you want to respond to what you are experiencing? What do you want to do differently? The world is asking questions like these also. And the pandemic of COVID and anxiety has prompted many to ask serious questions, existential questions about the existence of God and evil and suffering. 
So this gives us a wonderful opportunity to share the hope that we have with gentleness and respect and address the pandemic of sin with the gospel. Looking back, I'm hoping that we will be able to say it was the worst of times and it was the best of times. In 1918, Helen Lemmel, inspired by the Holy Spirit and also inspired by a tract she received from a missionary, drafted the words and the music to the hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see? There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Will you sing that last refrain with me? Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. God bless you. Well, thank you, Steve, for sharing an opening of God's word for us. I'm here with uh, Ron Brown, who is part of GHO and uh, is... Uh, Let's get you in camera there, Ron. <laughs> I've invited Ron to pray for us and uh, to pray for you all uh, before we leave. But uh, Ron, maybe even share a little update. I know we were talking just before we went on camera. Uh, some of the things you're trusting God for for GHO, because I know many of you have been praying for our global health outreach uh, ministry, especially given uh, with COVID-19, a lot of things have shut down of late. Yeah, sadly, we've had to cancel up to date 30 GHO teams through the month of August, so we're not sure about September and October. But we've been made aware of a domestic need, and that's right here among our first Americans. And uh, hardest hit with COVID-19 behind New York and New Jersey is the Navajo uh, Nation in Arizona, New Mexico, Utah. And they need nurses, they need doctors, and we're trying to get the information we need to put that appeal out uh, need a minimum of two week commitment but uh, you know sadly our first Americans are still some of the first forgotten in our own country and uh, so they're suffering there and they need help they need encouragement so well we look forward to hearing more about that as that unfolds and I want to thank you for your leadership and your team at GHO and all that you and Dr. Burgess are doing uh, to just give leadership during this very difficult time um, I've asked Ron to pray for you all as we've customarily uh, had a, a closing prayer and I've asked Ron to do just that. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you the fact that you are our great physician again today and you have your hands on your planet Earth and we know that your desire one day is that representatives from every tribe and tongue and nation and people will surround your throne with mm -hmm. praise and glorify you. And in the meantime, you've called us to take care of those who are sick, uh, not only of body, but also of soul. And we pray for our CMDA family that's on still the front lines of dealing with this COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We also think of our, our mental health care providers that are dealing with uh, the fallout of so many people suffering from anxiety and depression and, and uh, all those issues that accompany that. And we know you're the great psychiatrist and you're the great therapist and you are a great physician. And we call on you, Lord, to minister to the needs that are listening to this, uh, represented by our wonderful CMDA family, that you would love, you would touch, you would embrace, you would hold, you would uh, encourage, you would mm. inspire, and that your blood again would be the power that lifts people up uh, we know that by your stripes we are healed and we claim your healing power even on our frontline people who have themselves uh, contracted COVID-19 and pray for their recovery and their health and, and the uh, fallout that that has on spouses and marriages and families and work and school and so on. 
We're so glad this has not caught you by surprise, even though we continue to try to figure this mm -hmm. out. And we need your wisdom from your Holy Spirit. We need wisdom from your precious Holy Word. And we need wisdom to encourage one another to live wisely and to be men and women of Issachar who mm -hmm. understand the times and can interpret the times we're living in and bring hope and encouragement and healing and also the words of eternal life that come from Jesus Christ and in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ron. God bless everyone. See you next week. God bless. Bye-bye.